the next device we're actually going to do is going to be a micro switch. Two positions down and up, and it just springs back to up. So right here, I have two micro switches. This one is a bigger industrial micro switch, and this one is a smaller micro switch. These are both actually bigger than most micro switches are, I'd say. Uh, and there are some that are even smaller than this. And the ones on your 3D printer are honestly tiny. So micro switches have two positions, open and closed. So you connect the common right here, the ground. We're going to start out with the ground because that's the easiest part. And we only need one ground for this switch. So the common is pretty easy. That's the one we did right here. But there are two other positions, uh, these two right here. There is a normally closed. That's this pin right on this one, and then this pin on this one. Just look at the labels, and it'll say normally opened or normally closed. Basically, normally closed triggers when the switch opens, and normally open triggers when the switch closes. So. For normally closed, imagine you're on the Avengers helicarrier, uh, I don't know, and there's a forklift that's butted against this wall, and I don't know, this, this micro switch just detects that the forklift is in fact there. Nothing actually happens until one of the reactors goes out and the forklift rolls off the edge. Um, when the forklift rolls off the edge, something different happened, so it activates an alarm. So yeah, normally closed, that was a super weird explanation, but normally closed triggers uh, when the switch opens. I have a more practical example for normally opened. For normally open, you often see these in CNC mills. So normally open triggers when the switch closes, uh, when it's pressed. This is more what you'd actually think the switch would be like it's more or less a button. For CNC mills and 3D printers, the switch is normally open. Nothing's touching it. A signal is only really sent once the printer hits its boundaries and zeroes the CNC mill or 3D printer. These are also called limit switches because once a CNC mill reaches its limit, it'll fire the switch and the CNC mill will know to stop. Or if the CNC mill is stupid, it'll just ram into it. I've seen it both ways. Again, normally closed activates when the switch is open, and normally open activates when the switch is closed. These are abbreviated to NC and NO. I would also like to point out that these make excellent fidget cubes uh, if you're ever in the need for one, so you might want to just buy a few extra. They're very satisfying to click. So we do have the common done. It just goes to ground, but we want the other two wires. So for this, we'll say normally open will go to pin three and normally closed will go to pin four. Your wiring should look something like this. So we're in MobiFlight yet again. Let's go over to the MobiFlight modules tab just to get this all activated. We're going to add two buttons, button one and button two. This first button we're going to name is going to be named Norman Open. And the second button, I don't know, we can name Man Norman Clothes. I don't know. I'm trying to be funny, but it doesn't always work out. So the function we're going to do is a parking brake. So uh, we could theoretically make these funnier, but I, nothing's coming to mind. Let's upload the sketch and we're off. Let's make one row for the normally open. NO stands for normally open. Again, activate it. If you're not using something, you can deactivate it. Let's go to edit and select our module and normally open. We're gonna use an FSU IPC offset. This one is going to be with X-Plane. Uh, we have our offset list that you can find. It's in your X-Plane folder, resources, plugins, XPYPC, XPYPC offsets. I'll have a list of all the simulator paths in the description below, so you can just check there. When we go over to our offset list, let's find parking brake, shall we? 
So there is left parking brake, right brake, but we don't want one specifically left or right, we want it both. So there's actually a parking brake right here. Zero Bravo Charlie 8 and the size and bytes is 2. There are going to be two values, uh, a 0 and a 1. For now we'll just do an on press, on release, and what we'll do is we'll actually just copy this offset information onto the right. Zero Bravo Charlie 8. Zero Bravo Charlie 8. Size and, two. Yes. and let's set the value to 1 on release. Okay, let's test this. If we open X-Plane, uh, it'll automatically have the status right here, and once we press run, we can have our parking brake controlled by X-Plane. It's running, it's active, great. Uh, if we go here, switch the micro switch, we actually see nothing will happen, which is not what we want. <laughs> I actually fell for this exact thing yesterday. Uh, I did it, and I was kind of wondering why it didn't work, uh, but this one is actually a weird use case. I kind of glimpsed at the XP YPC values, but I didn't really care about them, <laughs> to be honest. So parking brake actually has a value range because it's animated. So zero is off and 32,767 is on. So we put, should put this value that's that was originally one as 32,767, and it should work as it usually does. Now, if we click the button, it works like a parking brake should. That's great, but it doesn't actually use this blue wire, so <laughs> the blue wire is kind of pointless. Let's show you how to use it if you are going to use the blue wire. Let's edit this normally opened command, and on release, select none. We only want a press action. Now let's make a new row named NC, normally closed. Activate it, because we want it active. Uh, use our module, our Arduino, with normally closed. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to use an FSUIPC offset right here. And I actually noticed there was a preset. There's cockpit brake parking you can use from this preset list. This preset list is awesome because it basically fills it all out for you so you don't have to worry about size and bytes and stuff like that. I was wondering why it didn't work and uh, make sure you press the use button. That's been a mistake I've made quite a few times. Uh, you, you gotta press the use button before anything happens and then you can put 32767. So that is a, a thing that can happen if you're complacent but yeah. Now it's all good to go, and once we are over here and we click the button, it works just like it did last time. So you can see right here that a micro switch is basically just a toggle switch, uh, but it looks intimidating. <laughs> but basically, just kind of treat it like a toggle switch with two positions, down and up, and it just springs back to up. So as you can see, this is going back to its two positions. So this is pretty cool because in a home cockpit, you could have your parking brake right here. And when it's not touching this button, when you pull it out, it won't touch this button and it'll stay out. But when you release the parking brake, it springs back to center and puts the parking brake in the on position. So this is pretty cool. Uh, there are a lot of actual implications you can have with this. One of these implications you can use is the Flight Sim Maker parking brake. I'm really impressed with this design. Uh, I really like it, honestly. So it's a parking brake that is triggered by a micro switch, kind of like this one right here. But basically what happens is this pin is normally back, not pressing a button. And then when it slides up to the on position, it hits this micro switch. And then that micro switch tells the simulator, hey, look, there's a parking brake, apparently, we've decided. So this design is really good. I'll leave a link in the description because it's pretty epic. Uh, and yeah, go for it. So that is our micro switch. Super fun. I love micro switches. And again, if the whole flight simulator thing doesn't work out, you always have a fidget cube.